Hubert feels threatened, it puts on an alarming display. When something comes too close, they'll flare up the arms and they walk around flashing these colours and advertising these really bright colour patterns. And I think this is advertising the fact that they're poisonous to eat. If anybody gets too close, even like a diver, they show all the bright colours and it says, back off, I'm poisonous. It's either pretending it's deadly as hell and trying to mimic something else that's dangerous, or it's walking around confident that it itself is deadly. Clearly, the flamboyant stands out from the rest of the cuddle pack. But is it just a big bluff or the real thing? Is it poisonous or not? To find out, Mark and Ronald need to look for a full-grown animal. And freshly laid eggs are a good sign that a mature female has passed through recently. Hidden under coconut shells, they find some flamboyant eggs. The mother should be nearby. In this bleak landscape, it's a challenge for a flamboyant mother to find a safe spot for her eggs. Without rocks or caves, old shells are the next best thing. Compared to the egg-laying frenzy of her giant cousins, hers is a quiet affair. She lays up to 100 eggs, a truly exhausting task. And with the laying done, she'll soon die naturally. But there's one more important mission she can help with, assisting Mark with his toxin studies. If this animal does turn out to be deadly, to be toxic, it will be the first cuttlefish in the world that's known to be poisonous. We could be seeing a whole change in the evolution of these animals. I'm really fascinated on what it is about them that's poisonous. Do they have a poisonous bite? Is all their flesh poisonous? Can they squirt poisonous ink? Mark will have to take her back to the Venom Labs in Australia to unravel her potentially deadly secret. The winter storms have finally passed, and the deserted mating grounds of the Australian giant cuttlefish slowly begin to warm. The parents died more than three months ago, but the next generation of giants is just getting started. Sheltered in their rocky nurseries, the eggs enclose pin-sized embryos Sucking up energy from the yolk, they've grown eight arms, red dot eyes, and their family trait, the cuddle bone. In the final month, the embryo's eyes fully develop, and still hanging upside down, they start moving around. By now, the egg's soft shell has stretched to double its size, and the bodies have outgrown the yolk ball. Once they start floating upright, the little giants prepare for the outside world. All their organs are now developed, and they can already change the color and shape of their skin.
After about four months, they scored a special acid from the tip of their tail to burn a hatching hole through the rubbery shell. the size of a fingernail, the tiny giants emerge like miniature adults with suckers, ink, and all. Nobody knows how many will survive. In a few days, they'll start hunting tiny shrimp and perfect their shape-shifting repertoire. but they've got to watch out. They're on the menu for almost anything with a fin. Sharks, big fish, seals, they all love cuttlefish. Their meaty bodies without spines or armor make cuttlefish a protein-rich meal. Camouflage is the cuttlefish's main defense. While they're invisible, they're safe. But once the cover is blown, their only chance is to disappear behind an inky cloud. Dolphins have developed a special taste for cuttlefish. Rather than gorging on the whole body, they prefer to just pick off their soft arms and heads. Leaving behind tattered bodies, they provide a free meal for many more creatures. But cuttlefish don't just end up on ocean dwellers' menus. In many countries, humans are one of cuttlefish's most voracious predators. Cuttlefish, octopus, and squid are eaten around the globe, harvested on a large scale. The total reported world catch is more than three million tons per year, worth more than six billion dollars. Our taste for all things calamari overwhelms even their best camouflage. But is there one cuttlefish no one should ever eat? Back at Australia's Institute for Molecular Bioscience in Queensland, Mark Norman is about to find out if the colorful flamboyant cuttlefish is truly poisonous or just a poser. That's worth looking at. Toxicity is really rare in these sorts of animals. There's thousands of species of octopus, squid, and cuttlefish, and in all the world, there's only blue ring octopuses, and just recently, the little striped pajama squid are the only ones that are known to be, to be poisonous, to be very deadly. And so, trying to understand the behavior of this strange little cuttlefish, I think it's really important that we find out whether it's pretending to be something else that's dangerous, or it itself is dangerous. Toxins could be anywhere from the skin to the inner organs. If the flamboyant's bite is toxic, its saliva will contain the poison, just as in the blue-ringed octopus. But it could also be mixed in with its ink. Mark needs to analyze all body parts. And the results? Well, it turns out the flamboyant cuttlefish is toxic. It's it's as toxic as blue-ringed octopuses, and blue-ringed octopuses have killed humans from their bites. So we've got the first deadly cuttlefish in the world, and it's amazing on a couple of levels. First of all, it's actually poisonous flesh. The muscles themselves are poisonous. So this is the first time that flesh that is deadly has been reported in any of these groups of animals. And secondly, 
that the toxin itself is not known. It's some completely different class of toxins. And toxins like those could be the key to whole new discoveries for lots of human medical conditions. But beyond any potential medical use, the toxin is exciting to Mark because it helps explain the flamboyant cuttlefish's oversized confidence. This is a fantastic result because it makes sense of what we're seeing in the wild. And, and this toxicity, this poisonousness, is probably what's underpinning the whole weird behaviour of the animal and the fact that a group of animals that normally swim around or spend a lot of time trying to be camouflaged have become so obvious, have given up swimming, are walking everywhere. It's like a major step towards a whole new line in the evolution of these animals. Evolution means change. So maybe in a few million years, the flamboyant will march on eight legs right onto the beaches. Or the broad club will hypnotize its predators as well as its prey. Perhaps the Australian giants will invent even more daring strategies to outwit their rivals. Cuttlefish are amazing and perplexing creatures, and we're still trying to understand how all this talent evolved. We are testing an animal that's very alien. I mean, it's as close, perhaps, as we're going to get to studying an animal on another planet. And is that exciting? That's very exciting. We do not know how smart or clever a cuttlefish is because every time we go and do a serious bit of field work or a lab experiment, we continue to learn new things about their capabilities for learning or memory or hiding. So I think we have much more to learn. I hope in my 80s and 90s I'm still wandering around underwater with a walking frame following these things around because it'll take a hundred lifetimes to get a handle on these animals. Cuttlefish continue to dazzle with their outward displays. 